Welcome back to What Are Tnibs with General Disturbance. This is the GSOR 1008, that's the General Staff Operational Requirement. It was a tank destroyer built during the 60s and never accepted into production, but um, it was one of four designs. This one's located on the east spawn of Airfield under the command of Chosen Dark. Now it's a tier 8. British premium tank destroyer. I had to think about that one for a second. It's got a 105mm gun which is capable of doing 320 alpha and it's got four shots in an autoloader. It's capable, uh, shows 320, penetrating 226mm of armour and it's got premium rounds that will do 321 so it's pretty good at penetrating the enemy. And the four shots actually are quite good in terms of they're quite fast. It's a reload of 43.1 seconds. It's normally 44.0. And the reloads are two seconds, between two seconds. Looks like the uh, E75 just got a hit on the Type 59 in the centre. And that ISU-152 is being a bit of a pain in the posterior. It looks like he wanted that firing position. And the E75 wasn't willing to give it up. Now this was one of the um, prizes in the loot boxes at Christmas. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. But it's actually a very good one. I got one of these as well. And I must admit they are pretty neat. Because that 105mm round will pen most of the enemy. You can get a huge amount of damage in a very short period of time. Because if you add it up it's 4 times 320 so that's 1,280 hit points of damage in a very, very short time indeed. And that's even if you just get an average roll off each shot. The only drawback with this thing is the reload time. It is very, very long. So long, of course, that that means you do have to seriously consider when do I reload with this thing. And the idea is actually to try and maximize the damage you can do but you want to make sure you can reload in time and they've just indicated there's somebody over on the rock just across the airfield i think that's the person who hit the st1 so there's somebody just across the airfield we need to keep an eye on and now we've got a weapon trade of panzer fear up here it's getting rather crowded and there doesn't appear to be anybody uh, from the tank destroyers in the south of the map under these circumstances, where you've got this many tank destroyers all at once at the same spot, I tend to go south, actually. I'd um, head south for the winter and try and take up a position down there, because this is just too crowded. If somebody fires at that ISU-152 with an arty round, they could hit me. But there again, there's no arty in this game, so I don't think we need to worry about The IS-3 is saying, oh, no, they're saying idiots. The IS-3 is not happy. He's down in the south and he's got no support. That's why he's a bit upset. And so the Type 61 just said to him, why you talk when you die in one minute? Yeah, I think he is probably going to die. And there's the Type 60, Type 6x6 six, six six, rather. Chosen Dark tried to get a shot on him. Couldn't. The kill shot went to the ISU-152, and now the Waffentrager's dead as well. Got taken out by the uh, Skoda T-50. So I did say it was a bit... A bit uh, it's a bit crowded here. And he's actually in danger now, because that ST-1 looks like he's uh, getting ready to shoot us. He fires his last round in and gets behind the wreck before he can respond. But there's just too many enemy tanks and from this position I mean he's moving the wreck into place so it can act as creative uh, armor I'd also say aim towards the uh, south of the map because the IS-3 is being pushed back in fact the IS-3 is no longer alive he got killed Chosen Dark still reloading. Well, the enemy attack in the south has actually been blunted. 
and that ST1 just lost another chunk of hit points. He's not thinking carefully about how he should be operating that corner, and now he's dead. Oh dear. Okay, so Chosen Dark's in position, he's also waved on, gets his first hit on the IS-3, second hit on the IS-3, third hit on the IS-3. Thor shot, failed. But he got three shots, and now the ISU-152 is dead. So it, it being crowded up here didn't really work well for the other players. Worked okay for, for Chosen Dark so far, because he hasn't lost any hit points. But uh, his teammates are starting to suffer, and he's now kind of alone because the uh, his teammates have all departed. And despite the fact that he's auto aimed onto that Emil, he's not loaded yet, so um, he's not ready to shoot. Even though it shows that he is actually loaded, he's not. Wait until the uh, there we go. That's it. First shot goes into the Emil. Second shot into the Emil. Third shot into the Emil. Pull back. And the ST1, well, now he's actually gone down the, the gap between the two uh, rocks. He's gone down the pass. Now, Chosen Dark decided to opt to reload because he did choose the right moment. You don't want to be sitting there with just one round left in your chamber and waiting for the reload to come in. Two of his teammates are now sitting behind him, so they can provide support whilst he's reloading. He just knocked the wreck back when he did that, and that, that's half unfortunate, because he needed that wreck where it was. I'm not sure he actually meant to do that, but I hope he didn't mean to do it. Yeah, the E75's gone down to the bushes over there. Char Future 4 in the corner. Pershing's... This is a good position now, actually. Now he's got to this corner like this, he can actually deal a lot of damage. The Emil 1 goes down. He's also aiming these shots on. He's not actually looking down sniper view. He's just taking them out by auto aim. Oh, now this is bad news. That guy sneaked up on him. The IS-2-2. And he's now pumping rounds into the pushing. And he's gone as well. Because the Progetto 46 got a shot on him. Now he's auto aimed onto the object 430. One round in. Two rounds in. Three rounds in. And he's out. So he has to reload. But he was spotted. Now the object 430 is killed by the E75 TS. So this little corner defended itself properly. Now he just needs another round in because he needs that Yag Tiger who's up on the Temple Mount. Now, is he going to get spotted if he pokes into that corner? Yes, probably, but I'm not sure the view range. The Yag Tiger might be just outside view range. If he gets any closer, he might be might spot us. But he's auto aimed on. Chosen Dark's going to use sniper aim this time. Come on, E75, get to position. There we go. Right now, pump him. First in. Second in. Good damage. He was seen. Ow. Took a round. Oh, now that's bad news. The turret got hit. The turret ring. And it took out of the operation his ability to re-aim. So he fired that next round. And unfortunately... Couldn't get it on target, but he's used his repair kit to get it back in operation. So he lost the round there, and he's now in reload. It's not a bad game, actually, or, or on the whole, for Chosen Dark, because he's got 4,286. And you saw him was just pumping those rounds in, one after the other, into the enemy. And you really can make the enemy suffer with this thing because of that two-second reload. It's so good at turning the enemy into pinholes or pin cushions I should say it's just that long reload that's a really a pain okay he's got another mag ready to go and he's using premium ammo now the scores are even at the moment but our char future 4 has moved up and he's actually now in the in the pocket now, now's the moment he could really move up. And if uh, if Chosen Dark goes and supports the Char Future 4, 
I think that he might not only get a lot of hit points, but um, he'd be a real pain to the enemy because, of course, that burst damage is very, very good. The Charfu Chur 4 is not moving out of the pocket yet, but the E75TS is going onto the Temple Mount. So he's got nobody backing him up behind at the moment, Chosen Dark. But he can back the others up if he can get spots on the enemy. Doesn't need to use the bush mechanic from this range. That guy's unlikely to see him. It is a uh, CDA. As I say, he needs to move up and support the Charfu Chur 4. That's it. No, 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 not that way. Oh, it's not the right way. I would have gone round the corner and just gone straight along the airfield. Okay, he's not going to go that way. He's going to go to the south and see if he can pick off the Waffentrake Alf Panzerfia, who is on south of Temple Mount. So, I suspect, actually, I have to eat crow here because... Um, I think he actually did make the right choice to stay where he was rather than heading south. You to cover your flank. He's going to cover the FCM 50 ton who wants support. Yes, if he'd actually gone south for the winter, he wouldn't have been up there to take all that damage off the enemy when his teammates started falling apart and dying. The Waffentrager is probably in a prime position to actually get some hits on that FCM, so he needs to move to a position close by. Okay, that's good. Very good. Oh, oh, oh! Waffen Traeger's up north. He's changed position. He's gone up north. There he is. Now, can he get shots on those guys from this range? We did lose the... Uh, or the Charfu Chur 4 just took out the AMX CDA. Okay, can he get shots on the Waffentrager Alpha Panzer Fear? No. Okay, move up. Move up. Good, 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 good. The Waffentrager Alpha Panzer Fear is gone. The E75 TS has gone him. There's only one enemy left. It's the Uders. Now he's probably back near the enemy cap area. Okay, this is good. Get there as quickly as you can. Support the E75TS and the FCM as they make their move. I think the Udas is going to be near to the cap. He might take a round when he goes over this rise. Remember, oh, he's been spotted. Okay, pull back. And yes, he is there. There he is. I knew he was there. Go empty your mag into him, dear. Sorry, don't mean it that way. But oh, we got the kill! Yeah, excuse me calling you dear, but that was a good shot, that one, at the end. I thought he'd be waiting just by the cap. Someone will be talking about us. Yes, chosen dark. I called him dear. No, I didn't mean it. Actually, I was thinking of Angelina at the time and because I was doing a couple of her replays before chosen dark's one. He got a first class tanker in the GSOR 1008 in that game. He got a fire effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got nine. And he got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game. And it's not really surprising considering how many enemy tanks. He literally emptied his mag into them and took them for as much as he could. 5,788 was the win eight. It's a good score, a very good score. And he really helped his team there. Look at that. 5,023 hit points of damage. The next high score being the Progetto with 3,685. And the third highest after that was the enemy Waffentrager with 2,853. And you can see that the Progetto got a tank sniper. The FCM 50 ton got a confederate. And yeah, that was a pretty good game. When it came to kills, though, it was the E75 TS who did the best. He got three kills in that game, whereas Chosen Dark got two alongside the Progetto, the Char Future 4, the ISU 152, the Progetto 66, the TNH 105 1000, the Skoda T50, and the Yag Tiger. When it came to base XP, he's actually in second place because the Progetto scored 1,193. I think that's because he was getting spotting assist off that one. And 1,143 went to Chosen Dark. 1,006 went to the E75TS. So three tanks managed to get over 1,000 base, which shows that they're really good players. 
23 shots fired, 18 direct hits and 16 penetrations. You don't normally see this many rounds shot from a GSOR, mainly because it gets killed after its first mag. You fire the first mag, you go into reload, the enemy makes a move at that point and you die. Uh, unless, of course, you're a decent player, if we, in which case you pick a spot where you can get a reload in and a couple of reloads after that, maybe. And like Chosen Dark, you end up uh, firing at least four or five reloads. In fact, he got six reloads in here, really, if you think about it. And uh, ended up getting a huge amount of damage. 5,023 hit points, of which 2,631 were at more than 300 meters. Two hits received from the enemy. Both of them, I'm afraid, were penetrations. Yeah, he did hit, take a hit from the Udes, and he did take a hit from uh, one of the enemy tanks. I can't remember which one it was now that actually did hit him, the other one. But I think it was while he was up in the north, he did take one shot. Uh, seven enemy vehicles damaged, two killed, and 263 hit points of damage assist. He earned 115,280 credit from the game. 57,640 from personal reserves, a total of 172,919 credits. After repair, ammunition, respawn, consumables, and yes, he did use some premium ammo. He still ended up with a massive profit of 84,289 credits. 1,714 XP, 172 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 1,886 experience points altogether. Yep, he said GSOR, right place, right time. It did work, he stayed in the right spot. He didn't go south, like I suggested, and that meant that he was available to pump those rounds in when he needed and get a great result out of it. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And please do let other people know that what RT Noobs exists, because apparently most of the other content creators don't know that we exist, or if they do, they just ignore us because we put out more content than any other channel other than uh, um, the uh, gentleman, if I miss, can't remember their name now, <laughs> Taco, was it Taco Replays? Um, they do, they put out much more than we do, but uh, we also have two channels, they don't, so that's what, that's our excuse anyway. Thanks for watching.